Mr. Eldridge, you're Councilman Gilbert, here by president. Yeah, thank you. At this time, I would like to ask those who wish to do so to stand for the invocation given tonight by Pastor Scott McKinney of First Baptist Church, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Thank you. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for this day. Thank you for the privilege to gather tonight to do business here in the city. Thank you for this great city. Thank you, Lord, for the leadership that you have raised up for this time. And uh, Lord, I just pray your head of protection around this city council, around the leadership of our town, uh, of our county, of our state. And Lord, we, we thank you for just your presence in this place. We ask God that you give wisdom for all decisions that need to be made and Direction, God, for each and every action that needs to be taken. Lord, I just ask that you would lead this city to be the city that really exalts you and shines for you and lives a life that models the rest of the world how we should live. I do pray, God, your head's protection. As I said a minute ago, Father, it's a weird time we're living in. And uh, Lord, we, we thank you for our, just a sure fact that we know we never are alone, that we're never left, uh, but you are always with us. So, we pray, God, for safety and security for our leaders. Uh, you tell us to pray for those who are in a position of authority and rulers. And, Lord, we do pray for our president. We pray, God, that you would continue to have your hand upon the, the leadership of this country. And for their edge of protection, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that uh, the, the outcome of events recently were different than they could have been. Even though, Lord, we grieve over the loss of lives. Uh, that, uh, that we experience every day, and especially recently. Lord, we pray that you will, again, bless us, watch over us. Thank you for your head protection. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Just take the line of the United States of America into the republic for which it stands in one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. I have three to consider approval of agenda as presented. Are there any changes? Okay. Okay. Do I have a motion? So moved. Motion made by Vice Mayor Elders. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Council Nibachi. Any discussion from the council? Okay. Public correct. Uh, yes, motion carries. Thank you. Item four appointments. We've got um, Pretty exciting board to hand out tonight. Uh, but first, we'll do four etiquettes or equipment to the Cookville Tree Board. I have got a nomination for Sid Bundy um, to serve on the Tree Board for a term of 8-1-2024 to 8-1-2025. Do I have a motion on that? So moved. Motion made by Captain Walker. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Vice Mayor Eldridge. Any uh, discussion for the council? All votes correct. Five yes, motion carries. Thank you for me. Receive life saving medals. Chief Evans. Mayor Council, uh, thank you for this opportunity. And uh, it's uh, my honor and my pleasure to present some awards tonight. And so uh, I'd like to start uh, with some life saving medals. Uh, and I'm going to combine the Distinguished Citizens Award with that because it's all one package. So, uh, uh, Tammy, you come join me. And then also, if I can get you Hunter for you, Debbie, come on up here. And uh, number back. So, Kind of give you just a little bit of background on this, and, and some, of you, some of you may have heard. So, this particular uh, crisis, if you want to call it that, uh, occurred at our Cane Creek Rec Center back in March. A uh, gentleman while playing basketball, and I think he may be here tonight. Uh, it will all be an opportunity to speak to you. Uh, suffered a cardiac event. Uh, and just so happened uh, that, that one of our officers, while off duty, uh, Sergeant Tammy Goldby, uh, at that point, now Miss Goldby, uh, working for us as a civilian, uh, was on scene as long as long with her uh, uh, pickleball, pickleball, <laughs> right? And uh, of course, obviously, uh, 
once uh, they were alerted, uh, sprang into action. Uh, the NCPR and uh, all accounts, uh, this gentleman is here tonight because of their actions. So it's my pleasure. Of course, if you may recall, it's not been too many weeks ago we gave Tammy her first life saving award. So this is her second. So her second subsequent award comes in this manner. So by, by, by policy, uh, you know, each year we, we normally try to identify a civilian that's deserving uh, of a citizen uh, award. And, and we thought this was the most appropriate uh, uh, opportunity to recognize both of these fine folks, uh, again, operating just out of the Good Samaritan and kindness of their heart, uh, along with Sergeant Goolsby at the time, uh, demonstrated great courage uh, in saving this gentleman's life. Thank you. Right. <laughs> Uh, we got uh, some additional life-saving awards for Officer Cody Scott, uh, Officer Brandon Lindsay. You, you guys will join me. Uh, did, did Lane make it tonight? Seems like he did. Okay. Yeah. And we'll have another uh, I'll mention him tonight, and we'll make sure he gets his award as Officer Lane Peebles. Uh, Lane is one of our new officers. Uh, he's in the academy, uh, probably on his way home this evening uh, after a hard week of push-ups and running and all the things we, they do there. But uh, as you all may recall, uh, back in June, latter part of June, uh, had an incident on Willow Avenue. A gentleman in, uh, uh, in crisis, uh, having some mental issues, uh, these officers arrived on the scene and, and their quick thinking and calm uh, response to this incident were able to distract and de-escalate uh, the gentleman and, and uh, shall I put it, of course, most of you may have seen the social media, uh, so we retrieved him off the bridge and, and ultimately saving him his life and uh, got him uh, the hope, the help that he deserved. So again, without again without their calm, uh, decisive actions, uh, their their bravery, uh, another another one of our citizens uh, may not be here tonight. So, just want to recognize them with their first life saving award. All right, uh, <laughs> Alyssa, if you don't be prepared to join me. So obviously there's a variety of, uh, of awards and recognition that's uh, by policy that we present each year. Every, uh, every year this month, uh, we, uh, prior to uh, uh, the end of July, we accept nominations uh, for Officer of the Year. 
Uh, and this year, I'm proud to announce that uh, Detective Alyssa Coppinger will be the recipient of the 2023 Officer of the Year for the Cooper Police Department. Uh, and I think uh, her captain who nominated her for this has probably said it best, and I'll just kind of read some of his comments. Uh, Detective Coppinger has been a valuable team member and top performer for the Criminal Investigations Division. Detective Cop Coppinger is an exemplary, has an exemplary attitude and work ethic. Her hard work and attention to detail in her assigned cases have resulted in multiple felony arrests. Uh, Detective Coppinger is a dependable leader in the department when it comes to financial and property related crimes. Uh, her value to the department goes beyond her role in CID. She serves as a member of the SWAT team, firearms instructor, armor, ICAT instructor, and member of the recruitment team. Uh, so obviously a multifaceted young lady. Uh, I will tell you a story. When we hired her, I told her mom I'd take care of her. <laughs> you know, mom was a little anxious about leaving her with us. Uh, but I think she's taking care of us. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm sure the council would like to make a few comments. Anybody wants to start? Or I will. Uh, <laughs> I um, could not be more proud of, of our police officers, of the citizens in this room. The fact that we had multiple people receiving awards, sometimes for the second time. Um, that just goes to show you what, what type of citizens and police officers we have here in Cookville. Could not be more proud of y'all. Thank you for what you do for this community, for our citizens. Um, we are we are absolutely blessed and lucky to have y'all be be a part of Cookville. So thank you so much for being here and for for what y'all have done. Yeah, you guys, you guys are top notch and value each and every one of you. You don't get the recognition you deserve, um, but you guys are an amazing, an amazing group. And I think we've got the best police department, uh, this side of the Mississippi and the other side of the Mississippi. So uh, you guys are amazing. And I've, I've enjoyed being around. I'm, I know some of you, and I've been enjoying being around you guys for many of years. And so I appreciate and value each and every one of you and what you do. You deserve a lot more than what we're able to provide. And we, we hope over the next few years we'll be able to continue to support you guys in a lot greater, in a lot greater way, for sure. You know, a lot of times I find myself trying to describe Cookville, and I said it's a it's kind of town where people care about each other, support each other, and are there for each other. Um, and both you, as our citizens and our officers, you put a lot of truth to that, and uh, and have done that in a, a really awesome way. So just thank you very much for being there for everyone. Yeah, we're the lucky ones. Thank you. Uh, just to echo and repeat everything that's been said here, and, and how lucky we are to live in a town like Cocoa. But you're, you're, you're the, you're the, you're the integral part of what makes it what it is, and we can't thank you enough. Yeah, I'm going to echo everything that they said. Y'all are a blessing to our community. There's absolutely no way that this community could be what it is today without you guys keeping us safe and also citizens who are willing to step up for their neighbor and make sure that uh, they recover from events and, and assist where needed. So we appreciate y'all. Thank y'all so much. Feel free to hang out for the rest of the meeting or, uh, <laughs> or you can get out and I won't. Yeah. We're not keeping attendance. It's okay. Uh -huh. I won't take it personal. <laughs> yeah, we're moving on to stormwater management. Exciting <laughs> stuff. <laughs> All right. As everyone clears out here, we'll continue on with, with the boring part of the meeting here. Um, we've got for old business 5A, consider approval of minutes of council meeting held on June 20, 2024. Do I have a motion for that? So moved. Motion made by Councilman Walker. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Vice Mayor Eldridge. Any discussion from the public on that? Discussion from council? Okay, go ahead and vote. Sure. 
Yeah. All votes correct. Five yes, motion carries. Thank you. 5B, consider on second and final reading ordinance 024-0618, amending Title 14, Chapters 5, 7, and 8 of the Cookville Municipal Code pertaining to erosion control, stormwater management, and riparian buffer zone. Uh, Ms. Mary Beth Elrod. Okay. Thank you, Council Mayor. Uh, the proposed changes to the outlined ordinance are a result of TDEC uh, 2022 permit. We had two years to implement this. Uh, we've done our due diligence and prepared these ordinances for Chapter 5 and Chapter 7 and Chapter 8. Uh, we put this out for first reading. We had no calls or comments on it and no changes since the first reading, so I do recommend your approval and would accept any questions if you have any. Thank you. Do I have a motion? Move to approve. Motion made by Councilman Walker. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Vice Mayor Eldridge. Any discussion from the public? That is not here anymore. Uh, <laughs> any discussion from the council? Gone. Wow, man. <laughs> Nobody stayed. Wow. Thank you, Lindsay. I, I'm taking it personal. Okay. No one uh, in Stormwater. No, they didn't care. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, no discussion from council. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a vote then. All votes are not in because Chad's not paying it's attention. Already, it's not yet. <laughs> we know why. <laughs> All votes correct. Five yes motion carries. Thank you. Five C consider on second and final consider on second and final reading ordinance O twenty four zero six one nine replacing Title thirteen Chapter one Section thirteen one zero seven tree ordinance of the Cookville Municipal Code Miss Elrod. Uh, this is just amendments to the tree board, the tree ordinance recommended by the tree board to update some wordings and practices. Uh, this is the second reading. We had no calls or comments on this and no changes since the first reading. So I do recommend your approval. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion made second. by Councilman Bocci, seconded by Councilman Walker. Any discussion from the public? Discussion from council? Okay. I'll vote. All votes correct. Five yes motion carries. Thank you. Consent agenda 6A, consider awarding bid and approved purchase of vehicle emergency response equipment. And 6B, set a date for a public hearing on 8-1-24 for ordinance 024-0820, amending the Cookville Municipal Code Title 8, alcoholic beverages, by inserting a new Chapter 5 to be entitled consumption of alcoholic beverages on public properties and public streets. Is there a motion on the consent agenda? So move. Motion made by Councilman to Gilbert. Is have the, and to have the hearing August 1st. Yeah, do we, I, I added the date in, so we don't need to make a motion. Okay. Yeah, yes. Okay. All, right, all, right. all right, so I got a motion by Councilman Gilbert. Second. So a second, second by Vice Mayor Eldridge. Any discussion from the council? Okay, go ahead and vote. All votes correct. Five yes, motion carries. Thank you. 7A, consider resolution R24-0716 to increase the fee in lieu of sidewalk construction. Mr. Ward. Thank you, Mayor Council. Um, section 209 of the Cookville Zoning Code established requirements for sidewalk installation for developments within the city. Section 209.4 sets forth circumstances where an optional fee in lieu of construction can be paid for developments that require sidewalk construction. On February 21st, 2002, uh, the City Council, through Resolution R020202, established the amount of the fee to be paid in lieu of sidewalk construction. The sidewalk fees were increased by Resolution R190917 in September uh, 2019. Uh, our current fees for sidewalks are $22 per linear foot for four-foot sidewalks, $26 per linear foot for five-foot sidewalks, and $32 per linear foot for six-foot sidewalks. The established fee has in been in place for five years without an increase uh, due to increased cost uh, for sidewalk construction. The planning division, after consultation with the Public Works Department, uh, has proposed an increase to the current established fees. Uh, these increases are $36 for four-foot sidewalks, $45 uh, per linear foot for five-foot sidewalks, and $54 per linear foot for six-foot sidewalks. Uh, these proposed changes uh, have been recommended by the Planning Commission, as recommended by the Planning Division. Uh, I request your approval. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Is there a motion? A motion made by Councilman Bocci. Is there a second? Second. Second by Vice Mayor Eldridge. Any discussion from the public on this agenda item? Discussion from Council? Okay, we'll vote. All votes correct. 
Five yes motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. 7B, consider authorizing the city manager to exercise purchase option agreements and proceed with the purchase of properties at 1806 North Washington Avenue, map 40F, group H, parcel 31.02, and 1816 North Washington Avenue, map 40F, group H, parcel 31. Mr. Mills. Mayor and council members, um, as you know, we spent many, many months trying to find a location for the relocation of fire station two. Um, we have identified, we believe, a, a perfect location to move station two for new construction. Um, of course, this station, like station three, is 50 years in age and is in dire need of replacement. And we try to keep it in as close proximity as possible to our existing station because each station serves a designated area that helps maintain our fire insurance rating. As you said, Mayor, these properties are at 1806 and 1816. Um, the 1806 property is owned by Larry and Dana Wilmoth, and then the um, 1816 property is owned by the Pearl Wilmoth Testamentary Trust. Both properties combined consist of 1.22 acres. Um, we approved an agreement back in uh, June uh, for the purchase of this. It called for a price of $650,000 for the two tracks combined. Um, it also included an option payment of $5,000 for each track. During the past uh, month and a half, we've done our due diligence. We've had soils work done on this. It shows that this does have suitable soils and sh soils and should support the uh, construction of the fire station and, of course, the, the, the fire trucks that go with it. Um, we've also had the engineers look to see if the station design would fit on this site. And as I noted, uh, Monday it will be tight, but we believe it will fit on the property. So I would request your approval to execute the option to purchase the approximate 1.22 acres of property located at 1806 and 1816 North Washington Avenue and authorize to, to exercise the option and proceed with the purchase of the properties at a total price of $650,000. Thank you. Is there a motion? Okay. Motion by Council Papaji, seconded by Councilman Walker. Okay. Yep. Any discussion from the public on this? Discussion from Council? Excited about the new fire station. Mm -hmm. We need them. Anybody else? I'm, I'm excited we found a good location on Washington Avenue. Midnight Avenue. All right. Go ahead and take a vote. Yeah. All votes correct. Five yes motion carries. Thank you. 7C, consider approval to purchase one CAT 305 Mini X Track Co. with CAT H65S hydraulic hammer and equipment trailer utilizing the statewide bid contract number 225, contract ID 72878. Mr. Turner. Uh, Mayor and members of the council, this is a mini excavator. Uh, Thompson Machinery Company was the vendor that we used through the statewide contract. The price is $112,929.52. It is a budgeted item and it uh, is under the budget. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion made by Vice Mayor Eldridge. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Gilbert. Any discussion from the public? Discussion from Council? Switching to orange or yellow. Let's see. The last, one, the last one was a cat as well. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Most of we, we have some oranges. <laughs> yeah, we have, we have some of those. Okay, I know that. All right, good to know. <laughs> Any other comment? All right, we'll vote. All those correct. Five yes motion carries. Thank you. Seven day, consider awarding bid for advanced metering infrastructure components and water meters, Mr. Turner. Uh, this item, the first 10 of these are what the numbers that were approved in that June 15th, 2023 contract for AMI meters parts. And the last two items on here, so source items, uh, we're asking for the unit prices to be approved. We've got estimated quantities there. And this is needed for the next step of our AMI system. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion made by Councilman Walker. Is there a second? Second. Second by Vice Mayor Eldridge. Any discussion from the public? Discussion from Council. I'm just, I'm really excited about the AMI projects that the city's got going on for our metering systems. I mm -hmm. think that's going to that's a huge improvement in our infrastructure. All right. Anybody else? All right. All vote. All votes correct. Five yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. 7E, consider approval to pay record management software RMS fee. Uh, Major Winfrey. 
Mayor and Council, um, as you may know, we share a record management system with every public uh, safety agency in the county. Putnam K911 purchased the system and holds a license at this time. Uh, per the agreement at the time of the purchase, we agreed to pay 25% of the annual maintenance fee, and that fee for this year is $35,072.79. Uh, let's see. There we go. Um, the payment would go to the Putnam K911. It is a budgeted item, and I would recommend your approval. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion made by Councilman Fauci, seconded by, Second by me. Councilman Walker. Any discussion from the public? Discussion from Council? Okay, we'll vote. All votes correct. Five yes motion carries. Thank you. 7F, yeah. consider approval to pay the annual lease to flock safety for five license plate readers. Major Winfrey. Um, as you may know, we currently have flock LPR cameras in use throughout the city in two uh, separate uh, contracts, on two separate contracts. This is for the continued lease of the first five cameras. Uh, the lease agreement covers a one-year period, and flock safety is the sole source provider. The lease is uh, $3,000 per camera, and the total cost is $15,000, which also includes uh, maintenance of the cameras. It is a budgeted item, and I request your approval. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion made by Vice Mayor Eldridge. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Walker. Uh, any discussion from the public? Discussion from Council. When when we're using these, how quickly does it come back to us immediately? Like the all yeah. kind of dispatch? Yes, it's 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 um, within just a few seconds. Yeah, so it's immediate. Wow. So this is this is huge for Amber Alerts, Silver Alerts. Absolutely. So it first started out for Amber Alerts and and and. Um, you know, traffic children, and it has grown. And, you know, we've we've been able to recover stolen vehicles. Uh, just the last few weeks, uh, we caught a uh, an escaped convict prisoner out of uh, Ray County and who came down and uh, got off on Jefferson. So, and we've used it for multiple things to caught people. Yeah, fun fact, um, we had a TBI agent, Emily Kiefer, daughter of uh, Melinda, who used to work for the city, yep. um, came and spoke to our Rotary group. She's in charge of the missing persons. Or yeah, she was an analyst for a long time, yeah. and she became an agent. Yes. Um, and uh, and the local law enforcement is responsible for most of the missing persons, missing persons um, solving things. So this is huge for yes. our community to have that. Yeah. Anybody else? Okay, we'll all vote. Although it's correct, I guess motion carries. Thank you. 7G, consider approval to purchase seven police per pursuit vehicles and three CID vehicles. Major Winfrey. Uh, Mayor and Council, uh, we request the purchase of seven Ford Interceptor SUVs, which are on statewide contract. The cost is 44601 per vehicle for a total cost of $312,207. And we're also requesting the purchase of three Chevrolet SUVs, which are on st also on statewide contract. You see the unit cost is $25,892.80 for a total cost of $77,678.40. Um, these are budgeted items and I would request your approval. And the SUVs, the three SUVs, Chevy SUVs are coming out of the drug fund. Nice. Thank you. Is there a motion? So Motion made by Councilman Bocci. Is there a second? Second. Second by Vice Mayor Eldridge. Any discussion from the public? Discussion from Council? Okay. Take a vote. All votes correct. Five yes. Motion carries. Thank you. 7H, consider authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with Axon for in-car body-worn camera system and authorizing one year, authorizing year one payment, excuse me, uh, Major Winfrey. Yes, Mayor and Council. Uh, the police department has used uh, fleet cameras, in-car cameras, and body cameras for well over 10 years. Uh, we've used and been under contract with Axon for over four years and are asking the city manager to renew the five-year contract with Axon just a little bit early in order to go ahead and get ahead of any um, supply chain issues that may arise. 
Axon fleet and buddy cameras are now on statewide contract 3040. The total cost for the five-year contract is $1,226,248.68. The one-year payment is $245,249.73. It is a budgeted item, and I request your approval. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion made by Vice Mayor Eldridge. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Gilbert. Any discussion from the public? Discussion from Council? No, we kind of had a conversation about the price tag of this. But there, There is no... Uh, Going the cheap route with these. This is something that the police department has to have, and we're very we're glad that we do have the state of the art technology and yes, the ability it, to do that. It, it, it is something that in today's law enforcement world you have to have. Yeah, absolutely. So it is also to take advantage of uh, purchasing early before a price increase, other than just uh, yes, supply it, chain. It was, so it, we're going to have an increase in the cost of the equipment effective January one, and that's another reason to enter into this contract early. Yes. yes. Good job. Um, anybody else? Okay, take a vote. Public correct. Five yes motion carries. Thank you. Seven I consider authorizing the city manager to execute an architectural agreement with AEI for construction of an expansion of the energy department facility located on West Davis Road, Mr. Mills. Mayor Council members, um, earlier this year, the council approved combining the electric and gas departments into a new department, the energy department, with the goal of reducing expenses and providing a more efficient service. A key component of this goal is housing the two divisions at the same location. I'm requesting your authorization to execute a contract with AEI for the architectural and engineering services for the construction of a new headquarters for the energy department. The existing facility at the electric division located on West Davis Road would be expanded to house both the electric division and the gas division. The project uh, involves the construction of 13,400 square feet of new office space, the renovation of 5,200 square feet of existing office space, new warehouse spaces for both the gas and electric divisions, re-roofing the existing electric building, which is about 35,000 square feet, the total uh, budgeted uh, amount for this project is just under $17 million. The proposed fee for architectural and engineering services is, is $500,000, which is about 3.33%, which I believe is a very good rate on a project of this size. The tentative schedule for the project is for the construction uh, documents to be completed within 90 days, for project bidding to occur in November and with potentially construction starting in December. Um, it's anticipated that the new facility would be completed by late 2026 or early 2027. The contract's been reviewed by the Energy Department Director, Carl Haney, and hello, Carl, in Mexico. That's why I'm presenting this tonight. <laughs> and he's on vacation, a well-deserved vacation. He's not watching. He's probably watching in Mexico. Anyway, uh, and also, Dan, our City Attorney, Dan Rader, has reviewed it, and of course I have. And I would request your authorization to enter into this agreement with AEI for the Architectural Engineering Services for a fee of $500,000. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion made by Vice Mayor Eldridge. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Walker. Any discussion from the public? Discussion from Council. Okay, take a vote. All votes correct. Five yes, motion carries. Thank you. 7J, consider resolution R2407-17, authorizing the submittal of a multimodal access grant application to the Tennessee Department of Transportation for the purpose of installing sidewalks along State Route 24, East Spring Street, committing the city to the local funding match and acknowledging responsibility for future maintenance, Mr. Ward. Thank you, Mayor and Council Members. Um, the city applied for a multimodal access grant through the Tennessee Department of Transportation in 2014 to install sidewalks along East Spring Street from the East Triangle intersection of East Spring Street and East Broad Street west to Old Kentucky Road. The project included two sidewalk segment connections along Parlin Drive and Raider Drive to the Cookville Community Center and Avery Trace Middle School. The city was awarded this grant in 2015. Due to significant cost increases since grant approval, the city requested and TDOT approved a, a revised scope to the 2014 grant to construct sidewalks to break the project into phases. Phase one has completed sidewalk construction from Old Kentucky Road to Raider Drive. Uh, council approved allocating additional funding to complete this segment, which was completed uh, June of last year. 
The city applied for and was awarded another multimodal access grant in 2021 for a second phase to continue the project. Phase two would construct sidewalks from the terminus on East Spring Street and Rager Drive to the western access point of the old armory, including a segment along Carlin Drive. We anticipate phase two of the project will be ready for bid this fall. Uh, the 2021 grant was for $1 million with a 5% match. Uh, this resolution would authorize uh, a 2024 multimodal access grant for a third phase of the project. Now, this phase would extend sidewalks from the phase two terminus to a proposed segment being constructed as part of the ta uh, Saxony Townhome Project. The maximum grant award has increased to 1,250,000. However, matching funds for the city of Cookville have increased to 10% as determined by the economic status designation of Putnam County. We can see from the map, the section in red is what has been completed. Uh, the orange section is what is uh, anticipated to be bid this fall. Uh, the turquoise uh, greenish section would be what we are including in this 2024 application. And then the Saxony section is being completed with that development and that is shown in pink. So we would uh, hopefully anticipate one last phase of this project uh, to complete the 2014 original grant award. This is you know, a look uh, looking east. Uh, you can see there's uh, some pretty significant topography issues on this segment. It will re require a retaining wall to be constructed. Um, it's a pretty expensive segment to complete. And this is uh, the section looking for Morningside West that would connect to Saxony. So I recommend approval of the resolution. I'm happy to answer any questions council has about the project. Thank you. Is there a motion? Motion made by Councilman Bocci. Is there a second? Second. Second by Vice Mayor Eldridge. Any discussion from the public? Discussion from Council. Okay, take a vote. <clears throat> All votes correct. Five yes, motion carries. Thank you Thank very you. much. That concludes the agenda portion of this meeting. Is there anyone who would like to speak to the Council on non agenda items? Okay, seeing none, anything the Council's got? All right, meeting is adjourned. Go to the car.